Sometimes in our community, um, we do just that. We do that with youth cultural enrichment programs. We do that with community outreach. We do over and uh, uh, we do outreach to over produce resources for our community in areas that are lacking resources in any way, shape, fashion, or form. Whether that be uh, food deserts and making sure we're providing food pantries, whether that be some an area which they need immigration services. Working on it. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, whether it be they're providing needing immigration immigration services, whether they need uh, uh, um, um, cultural enrichment activities, which I mentioned, but also if any conflict mediation, uh, uh, mental health services as well that are being offered in the community throughout the obviously specific situations, but also generally throughout the community. Um, we don't know those situations occur until they happen. We tend to be very responsive in a lot of the work that happens in the community. A lot of people call 911 because they need help in these situations. Our job, like organization uh, that will that will be speaking, of course, after me and with me uh, a little later on, do preventative work. We're here to make sure that we do the outreach and prevent violence in our community, um, prevent uh, lack of resources, prevent shin is the key. Uh, we are here today to talk about gang violence, talk about signs to look out for uh, with regards to your children. Your, kid, your, your, children, your children's friends, maybe your nieces, your nephews. We're looking at uh, not only gang violence, but also gun violence. People go, that's one of the same. It's not one of the same. There are so many different dynamics at play when we're talking about this uh, dynamic that's played our community. Most recently, we've seen a lot of shootings in our in here, specifically in the, the immediate area, in here in Canarsie. Um, and so you've seen a lot of reactionary programming a lot of reactionary responses, which is all warranted. But we are having this workshop because we needed to make sure that we were preventing going forward. Every time we have a conversation like the one we're gonna to have today, is one that is saving the life of youth in our community, or just the general community member at, at, at large. I don't wanna talk about specific shooting. That's not what we're talking about. I wanna to talk to you about what is getting us to this point, and what signs you need to look out for if you have a child who you might be concerned about, which I'm sure you are concerned about them, but concerned specifically about them interacting in the gang activity and or um, having access or to a gun or engaging in activity that could lead to a violent act in some way, shape, or form. A lot of parents parent every single day and they think, my child is good. I work hard every single day. I go to work. They go to school. Aunts, uncles, whomever, they're taken care of. Everything seems copacetic. I got news for you. If you have a child, if you have somebody you are responsible for that is school age, I got news for you. They are at risk, and they are in a potential situation to become either a part of a gang and or um, interacting in, and having access to a gun in some way, shape, fashion. If you don't believe that, most of the statistics say that the kids that you, that is not the ones that you know are the most affiliated, it's the ones that you didn't even know were involved. And most parents don't know. Most parents don't know for different reasons. And I'm going to ask you, can I ask y'all one question? Y'all mind if I speak straight to y'all? Yes. Y'all mind? Because I don't want to hold anything back. I'm going to try to be as PC as possible. But the truth be told is, most parents, most of y'all, just because you don't want to believe it, y'all make it so. But your child is probably showing you signs of things that are probably leading them to doing the things already. They're already engaged in it. They're already doing it. You just don't know what the next steps are going to be. Okay? We're here to discuss that. I kind of want to make this a discussion piece and bring other people into the conversation. But before I do that, I want y'all to understand one thing. A gun does not, the trigger of a gun does not get pulled because your child has the gun there. That's not the reason why. If that was the reason why, everybody would be shooting guns. Just everybody. Just willy nilly. You'd be wild, wild west out here. That's not the case. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. For whatever reason. If I put a gun here right now on the table, the only people who would pick it up are 
the people who felt the need to have to use it to either defend themselves mm -hmm. or bring harm to somebody else because they fear for some reason that they need to do that before somebody does that to them. That's the only reason. Otherwise, like this box, they would walk right by. Plain and simple. So think about that mindset. Think about that example that I just used with regards to gun violence in general. If it's a mindset, then we have to speak to said mindset. That's not a one-off thing. That's not me doing this presentation tonight. That's not you moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandparents, whomever, just saying, oh, I know what it is now. I'm just going to look out for it. That's a consistent, ongoing, constant, uh, preventative outlook in the way you deal with your children. One of the signs you need to see and look out for, a lot of the violence that is taking place is based off of social media. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. A lot of the violence that you see that's taking place is based off of social media. When we came up, or at least when I came up, you had to see somebody to have a problem with them. That is not the case now. People see, they don't even know about their real names. They don't go by their real names. Everything is about what they post. Everything is about what they are reacting to. Again, like that gun, social media. We would walk right by it if it didn't have some type of Instagram creation or response or reactionary pull to it. So we went to school, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas and grandmas. We did not bring our school phones to school before. Kids got the phones in school. So every issue becomes an immediate reaction to it through social media. Now I know you know this, a lot of people in the room know that, they're seeing it, we're living it out. But what's the mindset behind that said youth to be able to react to it and how they react to it? Conflict mediation, some of the things that we do. Conflict resolution, some of the things that we do, is to make sure that youth understand that one, everything doesn't have to be reacted to. And it, or how it rea is reacted to is one that is which you have control over how you present your reaction. So that's part of the work we do. However, we have something now that I know, uh, man up, or I go, I'm not gonna go introduce them now, I know they're gonna go into this, um, but they have something now, it's called a lot of interactions that's taking place is through music. Now when I was a kid, everybody was like, it's that, it's that damn music, I'm telling you. That damn music. So now I'm going to sound like the old guy saying that damn music. Right? Everybody remembers hearing that. And I remember hearing it going, my, you crazy. What are you talking about? Hearing music? Let's turn that back up. Right? The difference, well, slight difference is now is a lot of the music, they are speaking the culture. I'll say that again. The culture of gang activity through the music. Whether your child is a gangster or not. Your child might not even be a gangster. In school, your child's on his phone, does his homework, everything is tight, everything is good. But on social media, he's an OG. It's a big difference. Then people react to it, and it may lead to something that could be potentially violent. What things you need to look out for? I can't say to you, all right, just make sure, check and see if your child is on the phone all the time. Check and see if your child is on the phone all the time. Your child is on the phone all the time. Whether they involved, not involved, in any way, shape, or form, they're on the phone all the time. It doesn't matter. We already know that. I can say to you, check the content. Go and grab their phone and check the content. You probably wouldn't understand what the content was. You probably wouldn't understand what the content was. That does not mean you, are, you can't do anything about it. But what it does mean is that you can identify, okay, who, who are they communicating to? Are they only communicating? How are they communicating? What's the language that they're using? And I'm talking about the FUs and bitch this, and, and that's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's basic. Check the language. They have different language by which they communicate. So, and we're going to get into that. But there's so many different dynamics by which your child could easily be involved or be leading towards gang violence. There are so many different dynamics. That does not mean you're not armed with tools. That's what we're here to give you, okay? So I kind of, as I preface this whole conversation, I want it to be more of an open dialogue. So I said all of that to say to y'all, you might be thinking, what are you, I, now, 